reviews and discussion podcast. I am your host, Norman Senso. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I ship it, but I don't need to sting people to do it. Harumph. True that, man. Like, you don't need to be a cubit to ship people, man. Because the power of shipping is you can just force people to be together. Well, yeah, I mean, shipping is fun, but when it when it's you're basically taking away the character's autonomy, you're getting into darker territory. I mean, I, I give Caden so much grief over this. And now there's a bee that does the same thing, even a harsher. <laughs> uh, oh, but you want to know what? The bee is resilient because the thing about bees are that once they stung people, they die. Yes, and this thing's also rapid fire, which, oh boy, I'll get into that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review season one of My Little Witch Academia, episode 10. In this episode, Ako and her friends invite themselves to Andrew's party, where Suchi release a magical bee whose stings ignite a deep infatuation in its victim. Oh. So anywho, um, before we start, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well... <clears throat> Boy, this is this is actually kind of hard to critique because there's a lot of negatives I could point out, especially in the setup, about how no one in this is a genuinely nice person. Uh, Lotte's okay. Lotte, poor Lotte's the victim, I guess. She's she's in really bad company, really bad. But at <laughs> yeah. the same time, this is meant to be really absurdist. Just sort of go with the energy, have a laugh at the at the absurdity, and. Well, just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. But I know you can't. <laughs> well, that's that's sort of the thing. When you're talking about a review, you can't just necessarily turn your brain off and go with it. You got you to gotta articulate why. And yet at the same time, not lose sight of how someone could just enjoy the absurdity of the moment. But, but I was also stung as a child, so bees instantly raised my hackles. Oh, 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 oh no, that's bad. It was not. It was not a fun experience. I confess. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, as for me, um, this episode was a lot of fun. It was insane. Uh, I, I'm noticing a pattern here. Episode nine and ten are just crazy. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Uh, but the episode here for this one, uh, it's it's one of those cases where if Ako just didn't care about those two idiots, Hana and Barbara, things could have just been okay. Like, no no trouble then, whatnot. But no, Aku, Aku needs to prove herself. Or I don't know what she wants to do. But we, we got a show. It's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. Like, I, I, I like watching it. It's a good deal right there. True. And I do want to see what happened to Aku's progression because... She's kind of setting herself up to become the savior, the chosen one. Or the great destroyer. Death Each. by squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. And well, let's start the episode with our three heroes in a park bench admiring a bee while having ice cream. Yay. So... Su Susie here um, bought a bee. She wanted to get a poisonous bee, but instead she got a love bee. Was it? Was it called love bee? Cupid bee. A cupid sorry. bee. Yes, she got a cupid bee instead. And the gimmick about the cupid bee is that when she when the bee stungs its victim. Uh, its victim will fall in love with the first thing it sees. So, that's bad. But before I carry on, I have to comment on something. The bee here looks like a hornet. Well, maybe animal biology wasn't their, their strong suit. Though I just realized, if you say its name really fast, you actually wind up with Modica Magica. So, maybe they should count their blessings. Uh, true that. Yeah, true that. <laughs> and also, be sexy, yo. You know, I'm sure there's someone in the furry community who would agree. Have you not seen the pose of the bee? Come on. Well, again, I was stung as a child. I am 
I am predisposed to not like it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So while they admire the bee, uh, a limousine stops in front of them and pops out Hana and Barbera, taunting our heroes, saying that we got invited to Andrew's party and you did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And comes along Diana saying that, okay, this, I, I have to go to the party because I'm noble somehow and this sucks. I just want to go back to school and study. Okay, let's finish something and let's go back to the party. Ako is not happy with the circumstances and decides to crash the party. So I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, there's a question involved. Uh, we know that Diana got invited because she's uh, because she's highborn. Did Hannah and Barbera get invited in the, because they too are highborn, or are they just coasting on her? Plus ones. They're the plus ones. <laughs> They're so equally awful that they've merged into one identity. Yeah, man. Hannah and Barbera. <laughs> we are the bitchy Borg. You will be. You will be diminished. Resistance is futile. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but it, it does, honestly, I'm a little uh, worried for our, for Diana that she allows them to pull over and do this. Like, hey, come on, you can at least practice a little class yourself. So I don't know what's up with them. But either way, what I found just a little scary is how Aka wants to have it sting someone. <laughs> like, just off the bat, she's just curious. So let's invade someone's privacy have them stung by a bee and play with their mind. What? What? <laughs> um, this is a bit biased on your end because you got stung by a bee, but Ako here is just curious by what the bee could do. Like, what are the effects of the bee? So I, I, I'm guessing she's just curious with that. But yeah, that's not great, man. I mean, I, I realize that we're not watching Miraculous Ladybug, but I feel the need to say, you're sick! You're sick! It's been a while, yes. Oh, my. So, anywho, let's carry on. So, the three witches head to the Last Wednesday Society, the shop where they buy most of their magical artifacts. And, well, the guy sells them a box. It's called the Cinderella box. And when you cast a spell, it will give you a dress. Also, if I'm not mistaken, they also throw in the Sleeping Beauty set for free. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, the, you get a discount. <laughs> but anywho, uh, the three witches activate or cast a spell to get them dresses and whatnot. And it works. Our three heroes here are dressed in really beautiful clothes. But there's a caveat. It only lasts for two hours, so they need to get to the party fast. <laughs> fast, fast, fast. So they arrive at the party and they notice something, that it's invitation only. Oh no. So Ako decides to use a bit of magic on a squirrel to... What is the Pokemon term for it? Gigamax it? Dynamax? Yes, I think it's Dynamax. I wish Torterra was here because I'm too far behind the times to know. Yeah. So she she enlarged a squirrel to cause havoc so she can sneak into the party. Oh my god. <laughs> there's so many things that's so wrong with this. But anywho, they sneak in and they're successful. They go to the buffet table and eat because there's a lot of pastries. And it's so yummy. I, I wish I was there now because look at those pies and cookies and cakes. Uh. I mean, really, the buffet is one of the best parts of any party. Oh, that's true. That's true. You have a you have a bad buffet, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, avoid the potato salads. <laughs> Uh, but so, anywho, uh, we see the guest of honor, oh, sorry, we see the man of the hour, Andrew, being there, being all boring and whatnot, and being bored with the current situation, and his group of friends go up to him, and yeah, they, they spot Diana, they talk to him, Diana congratulates Andrew on a job well done, and Andrew 
notice Ako looking at him like Ako is jealous. I, I, I hmm? well, she and Andrew had a moment. I mean, when you escape a polar bear together, that just forms a bond, especially when you're dressed as furries. Oh no, the powers. Yes, brought on by the power of the Kakamawas once again. Yes, I keep doing the joke, man. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Andrew goes up to Ako saying that you're not invited and whatnot and asks her to leave. By the way, I'm paraphrasing. There's a lot more to this. But if I am to just, what you call this, uh, re- go scene by scene, we'll be here all day long. But anywho, Suchi has a brilliant idea of releasing the bees. Lotte just says, isn't that a bad idea? Uh, Suchi says, says, Ako wanted to, so yeah. So the bee stung Andrew, and the first person he sees is Ako. And the face that he sees her in is in this traditional Japanese bishoujo look. And he falls head over heel for her, and he's in love. Oh no. And this shocks the bejesus out of uh, Hana and Barbara and also everybody around them. Oh no. Aku notices that, hey, this is the effect of the bee. That's not right. And goes around and scolds Susie about it. And Susie just says, you said you wanted to see the bee stung someone. <laughs> it's not funny what happens to you, huh? Yep. And with that, the bee escapes. But in between that, it stuns all of Andrew's friend. And all of Andrew's friend sees Lotte for the first time and falls head over heels for her and profess their love. And Lotte is not minding this. She She's enjoying this. <laughs> but I'm just going to pause here. And Silver, what do you think? Well, I won the passive aggressive between uh, Andrew and, and Diane is just... God, you could you could cut it with a knife. It's so tense. Just they they really don't have a high opinion of one another. They don't have a high opinion of their surroundings. It's a quite the mess. So it's kind of funny when when they think, oh, they look so perfect together. Yeah, that perfectly hatred. But I I guess it, this is karma. Uh, getting Akko is she basically she wanted to test it on someone. It's true. And when she says to Susie, why did you do that? Can't you make it stop? She's like, no, seeing you suffer is, brings me such joy. And they're still friends. <laughs> yeah, how are they still friends? Dang. Double dang. Somehow the friendship, despite their best efforts, endures. But also, this bee, it's not even at its full power yet. <laughs> but this thing, this thing is rapid fire. It stings four guys in a row in quick succession. I mean, that thing is hypercharged. Forget the fact that it doesn't die after one sting. It is just boom, 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 boom. And it has a predisposition. I mean, I know what people say. Oh, a bee isn't going to sting you just for giggles. It, you've, it's got to feel threatened. Well, this thing it must be sentient. And it must love shipping. Because it just wants everybody, 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 everybody to be shipped. And it will sting you until you're with someone. Or have an allergic reaction and die. We're very lucky that no one at that uh, party is apparently allergic to bees. Mm, true, true. But at the same time, too, I... <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, I, you have to wonder, like, the bee is magical, so probably that's the answer. And the, f- the, the fact that the first thing you saw is the thing that you fall in love with, which there, when we reach that part, I'm just going to talk about the whole... Yeah, when we reach that part, when we reach that part, Anyway, Silver, you done? Yes, indeed. All righty then. So, anywho, Ako and Susie run out of the ballroom to chase the bee and exterminate it. Andrew runs after them. And, well, he's trying to look for Ako. And, yeah, just trying to look for Ako. Um, Ako here says, okay, what, what do we do? What do we do? How, how do we solve this? Like, we, we, what do we do? And Susie says, okay, um, Here's a fly swatter. If you kill the bee with this, the spell will probably uh, fizzle out. Probably. Anywho, um, good luck. And with that, Ako runs around trying to uh, exterminate the bee. 
Diana noticed something fishy about this whole situation and she walks around the hall and the bee is flying around her and stings her. Akko walks by for a bit and notices her uh, stumping against the wall. Akko goes up to Diana and says, Are you okay? And you know what happened? Diana opens her eyes and takes a look see at Akko and oh no, she's the first thing she saw and she is in love and she professed her love to Akko saying that how could I have been so blind? I love you Akko and she runs away being so embarrassed by the current situation. Hana Barbera faints again. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh boy. They're going to have 50 conniptions before this night is done. <laughs> I know. Ah, if this were another kind of show, they would have kiss. Probably better that they didn't, though. That, that would be one of the worst. True. Because they that is drug induced and non consensual. Uh, true. I mean I mean consider that when Andrew wants to declare his love, he slams a hand against the wall and presses in against Akko. It's like dude, personal space. But it's a trope. It's a trope that's been around for a while now. Well, just because just because it's been around for a while doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. Also, we're in a certain era. Social distancing. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's in. <laughs> this movie came out a few years ago. So social distancing was not a thing. 2017. <laughs> uh, remember 2017? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Things were much, le- things were much less crap back then. Yeah, less. Not much, but less. <laughs> Uh, well, anywho, uh, Andrew goes out to the courtyard and his father follows him and talks to him about um, the situation. He says that uh, there's witches in the area and I want you to get rid of them. And yeah, Andrew's dad here is a controlling father figure that is micromanaging him to a point where Andrew likes to play the piano, but his father thinks it's a waste of time and tells him to stop. Playing the piano is cool, dude. Oh my god. So anywho, Akko listens in on this conversation and, well, she doesn't like Andrew's dad. So Andrew's dad goes back to the um, ballroom and Akko just stops by and berates Andrew about not following his dream and not doing the things that he wants and loves. And somehow, uh, Akko here struck the pose in the, uh, on the fountain and it, it kind of inspires Andrew or sparks something in Andrew. Uh, but Akko just says that, oh, you're, you're not saying that for real Z's because you're uh, affected by the spell by the bee. So whatever you say, I can't really take it seriously. So anywho, um, Help me get the bee so we can solve this problem. So, uh, they do. And, well, Akko runs to the ballroom or looking for the bee and trying to exterminate it. Uh, The bee stops by the piano and Akko, being the idiot that she is, um, smacks the fly beater on the key and causing a commotion. Everyone looks at her in disgust and Andrew pops in saying that ladies and gentlemen, uh, Miss Kagari here is uh, helping me to solve this problem. There's a bee here and we need to get rid of it. While she does that, I will play the piano for you guys and I'm going to play Flight of the Bumblebee. Yay. I'm going to pause here. I got to call bull on this. What? Why? (coughs) They established that Andrew hadn't played in 10 years. That's a heck of a lot of rust. And yet, and yet, he is able to play Flight of the Mobile perfectly. I mean, that is not an easy, as far as I know at least, I'm not a pianist. I have no musical uh, talent. But as far as I know, that's not something you can just pick up again right where you left off. Even his muscle memory should have slackened. So me thinks he's been defying Daddy Dearest. My excuse here is that, yes, he did not play the piano, but he played Keyboard Hero. So he has a lot of practice, yo. (laughs) 
Or maybe he's got an app on his phone. Either way, he's been somehow keeping up on his piano practice. Probably. As he should. Yeah. Well, th- he did say that he didn't touch the piano for 10 years, but that doesn't mean he cannot play the guitar. Or he did like air air piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hearing the music in your head as you hit the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he could just be playing on, it on the keyboard, like a computer keyboard. <laughs> Uh, now, also during all this, mm. when Akko, honestly, this was probably one of her best scenes, her in front of the fountain, just berating, but also posing, just getting into the spirit. And yes, I will agree with Andrew. She can be pretty cute when she's like that. <laughs> Talk to you about her dreams. This Akko is a character who shows her worst before she shows her best. And you take the good, you take the bad, you take it all. And there you have the Akko of life. <laughs> but... I one very odd thing I noticed is that Andrew is not at all influenced by the love spell while he sees her. He should be swooning over her like a fool, as everyone else does. But no, he is very well, Andrew, <laughs> which is very controlled. Which makes me wonder, makes me think at least, his father is such a bring down, such a massive bring down that the spell just gave up the ghost. You know, first I thought, oh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's worn off with time, and Akko doesn't know this. But everyone else is still under the influence. Poor Diana, uh, falling in love with a mirror. There's yet to come. <laughs> really, I thought we were at that point so, since we were at the play of the moment. Oh no, sure. Uh, the, the chaos haven't happened yet, but still, yes. Well, either way, uh, he is apparently so downtrodden by his his jerk of a father that he even a love spell can't pull him out of it. And you're just like, wow, wow, that is quite the bring down. We should name him High Governor Bring Down, Sir Mood Killer of the High Order of Daw. But at the same time, too, you, you have to wonder if Andrew is... Okay, what does the spell do? Like, does it really... Like, it's, they say that they're infatuated with the person. So with Andrew here, it's not really giving that strong effect at the end could he could he be infatuated with Akko before this because the way that they presented his memory of Akko was from the whole scene where he was involved with being chased by the polar bears and whatnot but with other characters with uh, Diana it's just what we seen there so you, you have to wonder like is the sp- well, how how does the B work? That's the thing. Like, how does it work? Inconsistently, it appears. But anywho, um, anything to add, Silver? Because uh, I I said I pause here. So, what are your thoughts? Mostly that we're past the awkwardness of the characters making very very poor decisions, and now we're in just the fun of the frantic energy. And I do mean frantic, as everybody's running around, getting stung, fainting, crying. Susie is the only one really having a, a marvelous time, as she is completely. Uh, detached from the consequences. <laughs> That's true. I mean, she doesn't even try to swat the thing herself. She just gives it to Akko because she realizes, yeah, it'd be more fun this way. <laughs> yes, that's true, that's true. So, uh, anywho, I'm going to carry on, if you don't mind. Sure thing. Akko chases down the bee, trying to swat it, and doing a little bit of parkour. So that's cool. And while chasing, sorry, while running away from Akko, the bee st- Tongues, a lot of people in between. And we get to see a couple, boy, uh, a girl and a guy. And then, guy and a guy, girl and a dog. No, 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 <laughs> God, no, why? I don't know. Uh, but anywho, uh, we see the beast tongue Diana again. And she looks into the mirror and falls in love with herself. <laughs> oh, God. Talk about loving oneself. Mm. <laughs> well, I guess there's total acceptance of oneself. Not true that. And uh, while this chaos is happening, um, Andrew's dad uh, walks in and gets tongues. And the first person he sees is Akko. And, oh God, no. Mm. I'm worried about all of us watching this now. Uh, we need to get out, man. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> You got a social distance. Yeah, I mean, okay, they say you have to social distance, but they they didn't say you have to. Uh, you can't go outside and social distance. Like what? Um, my my country says it's one meter apart. What's yours? 
Let's was it six feet apart? Six feet. Oh man, what's six feet two meters? Damn. I I never really excelled at that. Oh man, like okay, six feet apart. Like uh, okay, but still, uh, we we can do it somehow. When we go outside in social distance, we just have to shout a lot. What? <laughs> Would you like to try some of my ice cream? <laughs> what? Uh, I'll just text you then. <laughs> um, okay. Boys. Well, anywho. Um, Andrew's dad. Um, take a look, see at Akko. And oh no, he fell in love. Before he could do a reaction, Akko just smacks him in the head with the fly swatter, uh, nullifying the effects of the bee and getting everybody... Back to normal and yay, that's awesome. So Akko taps Andrew on the back saying that, hey, you, you play well. That's really awesome of you. And Andrew is rather aloof and treats Akko like trash. The two hours are up and Akko is back to her school uniform. And with that, they, well, uh, let's just say that uh, Akko is not having a great time. And Lotte too, because, well, as much as she likes the attention that she's getting from the boys, uh, she knows it's not real and she just, well, uh, smile, uh, gives a sad smile and just says like, oh, well, it wasn't meant to be. But Andrew's friend goes up to Lotte and just introduce himself and asks if you want to go on a date. What was his friend's name again? Fred, was it? I thought it was Jacob. Jacob. Oh, I, I don't remember, but still, if you say Jacob, it's Jacob then. So, he introduces well, himself. Now I gotta look it up. Uh, uh, while you do that, I'm just going to carry on. So, he introduces himself and asks on a date. And yeah, um, he just comments on, hey, uh, I think the school uniform you have there is rather cute on you. And, well, uh, Lotte is surprised by this and, well, she she's intrigued. She's intrigued, and Diana is Diana stops loving herself and just says, "Okay, we need to get back home. Uh, we need to get back home." <clears throat> and with that, Andrew and Jacob was it Silver? Nope, you were right. Fred, it's Frank. Uh, Frank. All right. So Andrew and Frank they hung out at the balcony. At at the house and just talks. And Frank just says, um, that Lotte girl is pretty cute. Like, yeah, um, like she, when we, when she smiled her sad smile, I felt like, you know, she's rather interesting and intriguing. And Frank just asks, um, Andrew, like, uh, are you interested in Akko? It seems like you are, since you're defying Daddy Dearest. And, Andrew doesn't really give a straight answer, but you can tell that he's interested in her. Yeah. So we go back to the witches in their bedroom, and Akko and Susie just ask Diana, like, what? You, you, you rejected him on a date? And Susie, sorry, and Lotte just says, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, we just knew each other and straight on a date? That's not right. I, I told him that we could just be friends first and see where that goes. Lotte is a smart cookie. Susie and Lotte just tease Akko about Andrew and says, like, what do you think about Andrew? Do you like him? Yeah. And Akko just says, oh no, he's a big fat jerk. Oh, leave me alone. And with that, episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think? And final thoughts. All right. Well, one... This is where we truly see the bee at its full power, as it could sting everyone in a room in mere seconds. This thing is a dive bomber. And you know that while Andrew may be playing Flight of the Bumblebee, as it's going around, it's humming, I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee. Basically, that thing's just having fun, and that was snuffed in the prime of its life. <laughs> oh, the tragedy! Oh, yeah. I mean, Cadence would love that bee on her end. Man, we could get really Freudian there. I mean, when you have a talk about the birds and the bees, I don't think this is what they meant. Yeah, and do we have a shipping bird? Oh, man, if we do, that'll be awesome. Yes, we have a shipping bird. His name is Silver Quill. Ka -ka! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the cubic B and you. Yeah, Kaden's most powerful weapon. I would unleash it upon an unsuspecting <laughs> world. I'd unleash a swarm because the scariest thing is these things are mail order. 
but uh, I mean, you don't feel bad for the father as he gets smacked in the head because, well, he's earned a good smacking. That is true. Akko's lucky to get out. Though, I keep wondering what happened to that dang squirrel. It's Akko that cast a spell, so it didn't last long. Maybe not, but that squirrel's like, what did I do last night? <laughs> that was just plain nuts. Uh, I need to lay off into the nuts. Oh, I, those special nuts. Woo! <laughs> uh, That's the last time I have the wasabi, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, boys. But there is one very minor thing at the end that I'm curious about. Mm-hmm. Did you note the book that Andrew was reading as Frank was being, well, very frank about his feelings on Loki? Yeah, it's 1984, was it? Yes. What was it? Do you know? Oh, you, I wasn't sure if you knew what 1984 was about. No, not really, because it's... Um, let me let me double check the book. Like, It's not descriptive. It's just... Uh, it, hmm. In all honesty, the picture doesn't really say much. It's just... The book is titled 1984... Uh, it has the barcode at the back, and it has a picture below 1984. But from my end, it could be a steak. It could be a hot pot. So I got no idea. Well, I'm afraid it takes on a very different meaning for me because I, I well, I, I'm trying to sound highly cultured. We were assigned to read this in high school. Oh, really? No? 1984 is a, a dystopian doomsday story. It is if communism were allowed to be the governing power. Ah. And in the in 1984, which I think was rather terrifyingly predictive of our modern culture, your television or viewer, I forget the exact term, it's always on and it's always monitoring you. Homes are set up so that you can't hide from a camera. Public spaces are have mics hidden everywhere to eavesdrop and, and keep an eye out for sedition. And if you are guilty of thought crimes, this is the place where this is the story where, where double speak uh, was first coined, or at least that's, or at least it's what made it popular. You are hauled off for re-education. Hmm. So, one that's a pretty it, and it believe me, this is by no means a happy story in any sense of the word. But it kind of makes me wonder why is Andrew reading this. A story where everything you do is monitored by a higher authority. You're expected to fulfill a certain role in society, and any variance leads to harsh discipline, if not a complete destruction of everything you love. It feels like he's being trapped by his father, and this is something that he could relate with, because it feels that way. It does, and that was perhaps one of the best characterization moments, but it's so subtly done. Yeah, I mean, it's not hitting you in the head like, this is the character's motivation, this is the character's motivation. Or, you know, Akko doesn't say, oh, what's this book about? It's a book about the complete subjugation of one's personal life to a higher authority, and the fact that you can never find peace in the things you love. Oh. Ew, millennial. <laughs> <sighs> Who probably didn't read 1984. <sighs> uh, you know, see, I didn't. <laughs> was this sorry? In your case, I think there may be a cultural divide. Yeah, I, I was trying. I was going to ask: Is this something that you were forced to read during high school? It was. Gosh, was it sophomore year? So, and it was actually one of the one of the more interesting reads for me, as I always am drawn to fantasy and sci-fi. Though it's a test because the the back cover said. You'll you won't believe it after you read the final four words of the story, and so it was a test of wills, which I failed to not skip ahead and read the last four <laughs> words. But you did. I did. I, I I don't have patience. I don't, and I guess I don't sweat spoilers. <laughs> uh, all righty then. Still, oh man, that, that is fascinating, and that oh, wow, the. Oh, wow. This is double standards, too, when you think about it. Because the book itself, uh, was it written by an American? A uh, British uh, person, I believe. Let me double check that. 1984. Uh, all right. Well, while you do that, I'll just uh, elaborate my point. Because the book is... Ah. Sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I, I, it's George Orwell. Oh, George Orwell. That's right. I, or- Orwellian dystopia. 
Oh. And yes, he was very much an Englishman. All right. So the book is written by an Englishman, um, probably in the UK, you know, Kingdom or not. And it fits well with the character in Little Witch because we got no idea where they are, but we are assuming that they're probably from uh, uh European country, probably in the UK, something like that, probably. And it's written by Japanese. And for them to add in a little, this little detail for Andrew says a lot about what they are doing with the character and how they're setting him up and just doing minor details, which is really fascinating and interesting. Like this little detail here with the book is really cool. And I know we're harping on the book a lot, but it's one of those few details that if people don't know, like myself, would have missed out. Which is why it sometimes pays to pay attention to a review podcast or video. True. Because if you can point something that would that the audience would not realize, well, honestly, I think that's actually more valuable than saying why something didn't work. True. And it's one of those things where as as we go forward with the show, we'll understand a bit more about the character and... I I think this is what they call as subtle hints to the character and stuff, because what um I I think one of the Patreon uh, supporters just mentioned that when he watched ponies he noticed a few hints about this called being Grogar. It's there if you know what you are looking for, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, and for this one. I got no idea where this is going, but it does explain a lot about Andrew and his personality. Anyway, Silver, um, anything more to add? Well, let's see here. I mean, I think Akko and friends should be very grateful that they got away with only a small, with only a small bit of embarrassment. They technically could have been uh, arrested for trespassing and assault with a deadly squirrel. <laughs> True. Oh, assault with a deadly fly swatter. Although, if I have to think of any karmic debt for Susie, it's that because of this, she cannot uh, get her money back. <laughs> <laughs> you break it, you bought it. Uh, true, but I think it's worth the price of emission. Maybe. Either way, she's like, oh, this is way more fun. It's totally worth the price. Yep. It's like, wow. So, anywho, uh, as for me. Bad friend. <laughs> uh, as for me, I like this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. Uh, getting to look, see at how the show just goes bonkers with all the things that they're doing. Because I didn't expect this to go that way where, um, okay, we read the synopsis, we they, we got the setup, we got the Chekhov's gun. Andrew's going to fall head over heels for Akko and maybe Akko will kind of go along with it. But no, no, no. She she just wants to do the right thing and kind of fix her mess. So that's fascinating and interesting. But Akko is the one that wanted to see this madness happen. But uh, when it when it falls upon her, she says, "Why did you do it?" Like, yeah, karma, karma. And Lotte here having what you call this uh, a love interest is cool i i dig it i really dig it i hope that in future episodes we get to see where this goes because it would be a shame if we just get nothing and as for diana hey shipping fuel yay because fans want them to get shipped i guess uh, the shipping is strong with this one yep. per personally i think she's just lucky that only only her cronies Maybe she called them her familiars. Oh god! Only they, only they saw her embarrassing moment. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, yeah, I, I think that's about it. We, we we can't really say much about the episode because it's well. Let's just say that it's it's there. It's a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the next one. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode review? Well, I'll tell you true. I think it's time to face the madness. The newest wave of ponies upon us, and it is Chibi. Oh, wow. Mm, mm, mm. 
So we shall look at the premiere of Pony Life. Yep, yep. So next week we'll be oh wow. Next week we'll be watching uh, My Little Pony Pony Life and give our thoughts about it. Um if you guys are Patreon supporters, you might have already guessed what we think. But yeah. This time around we'll we'll be more eloquent with our words and more uh what's the word like before? Help me Silver, help me. We'll bring our thoughts and be eloquent and articulate. Yes. Yes. Uh let's just say that um after a rewatch we'll get more opinion on it. <laughs> We may be we may be harsher or kinder to it depending on how the group discussion goes. Oh yeah, true that. I I hope we have at least a positive disposition. But if not, um, we'll see. We'll see. So anywho, uh, this. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theamusergmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo Silver. Where can the good people find you? Well, first look to Twitter and DeviantArt under the screen name MLP Silver Quill. There you shall find me, especially on DeviantArt where I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics. Then scoot on over to Patreon or Ko-fi and search for Silver Quill. You can support my videos and comics, and I would be very, very grateful. Speaking of my videos, you can find them on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Factor Silver Quill. And then keep an eye on Equestria Daily for as we inch ever closer to new comics on the start of Season 10, I will be posting editorials on comic reviews. Yay, I can't wait for those. And also, don't forget the My Little Pony Cross Transformers. Those are coming out too. Yay. Uh, yes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya! I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee. I'll behave. Nah, baby. <laughs> you mean BB? <laughs> oh, BB. Ah, man. I, I got no bee puns. Uh, that, that was rather dead. Oh, I don't know. I, I thought it was a sweet. Oh, honey. <laughs>